What's going on, guys? And before we get started, we have to do a makeup check for you clowns, right? Uh huh. <laughs> oh, should I show it? Yeah, you have to show it. Of course. Nah. No makeup. <laughs> no makeup, guys. What a surprise! So I am I here got with Crystal. Pencil. <laughs> I'm here with uh, I'm here with Crystal uh, Kasumi Chris. Uh, I'm going to let her kind of introduce herself, and uh, she's going to kind of cover what we're going to speak about today. All right. Yes, I'm going to share my story how I went from a vegan lifestyle, vegan diet to a carnivore diet. It is really based on carnivore keto. Um, yeah. So somewhere four years ago, um, I went vegan because of health reasons. And it started with me having very, very severe cystic acne. Before that, I went to the doctor. I got pills. I was uh, on the birth control pill. And when I got off of the birth control pill is when I got really severe acne. But I was struggling with it already since I was 16 years old. And um, it led me to uh, find an answer in diet, which I researched on the Internet. And I found a plant-based vegan diet. And I saw so many stories about people talking how it, it solved their acne, how, how it uh, improved their health. And I thought, let me try this. So the first um, three months, I was kind of dabbling in it. And I had some chicken here and there still. But after I watched um, a movie called Earthlings, I completely went vegan. Like I, I stopped with everything. And I did see improvements in the first months when doing that i ate a raw till four diet which now i look back on it's really ridiculous but i ate fruit the entire day and uh, the last meal uh, at night was cooked and mainly rice beans vegetables and i had here and there a slice of bread at night and i noticed that my cystic acne went away and now when i think back of it um that might be due to just removing all the refined food, all the processed foods out of my diet, because I was literally only eating fruit and then a cooked meal at night. So no processed foods anymore in my diet. Um, I continued with it for a while. I lost weight and I thought, oh, my God, this is kind of cool. This is working. I, I'm feeling healthier and more energetic. But at some point, um, I didn't... It, Eating so much fruit didn't feel, feel right, even through the winter time here in the Netherlands, it gets cold. And I started to look into other ways of eating a vegan diet. I found a start. How far tradition. in is this right now? This is um, almost a year into it. Okay. Yeah. So, so three months of chicken, saw earthlings, did raw till far. That's the banana girl, right? Yep. And, and yep, how, really. how long did it take for your cystic? Your cystic acne was gone in months, right? In Two weeks. In two oh, weeks, two weeks. Acne, oh, wow. yeah, it went away. That's then, uh, now we're a year in. Yeah, now we're a year in, and I was already feeling that I couldn't handle the fruit as much anymore as in the beginning because before I could shove it all in. I had fifteen banana smoothies, and I couldn't. Fifteen at once. Fifteen. I once did that for once. <laughs> you, hold on, hold on. We yeah. we going for a ride in the blender, boys. Let's go. All right, so. <laughs> Explain to them what this smoothie was. I'm curious. Yeah, so I, I had this habit of uh, buying tons of bananas, like boxes, because freely. So you went to the, yeah. it, go like the whole yeah. story. Like you went to the store, you bought a giant case of bananas, like like a monkey. Yeah. Like, let's. let's <laughs> and and I brought the the whole thing home, and I let them ripe. And then I would just grab a bunch of bananas, put them in the blender with water. I wasn't the one that would put extra sugar in it. That I, I just tried to stay away from that because it was already sweet enough. But water, bananas, blend, and that would be a meal for me. That's so and it would make me go to the bathroom right away. I was going to say, you went to the bathroom immediately, right? Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, wait, yeah. So that, that was kind of my diet. I also ate a lot of oranges like in, in that time. But I was getting really sick of that. And I wanted to find a different way um, to eat. And that's how I came across uh, Starch Solution, uh, Dr. McGregor's video, Dr. Gregor, I always say McGregor, but his videos, uh, I started binge watching uh, 
also Dr. Furman, all these vegan doctors, um, because I, I was doing this mainly for health. Uh, the uh, animal rights stuff and those kind of things were just extra benefits that I thought I was doing something good. Um, yeah, so I I kept it whole foods plant based. I didn't go into the processed foods, the processed uh, uh, meat replacement or the cheeses. I knew to stay away from those things. And I noticed that I felt a little better not consuming that much uh, fruits anymore. But I did notice in overall, um, just my energy was dropping and I didn't understand why, because I was always such an energetic person. I was very active in the gym and just doing my day-to-day -day things, but things were getting more difficult. And I think I, I stuck to this way of eating just the, the generic whole foods, plant-based diet for two years. Can you just take and us through like a, typical day or two with this what you're eating um, yeah in the morning I would have oatmeal just uh, a cup of oatmeal uh, with water I would cook it in water uh, I would soak the oatmeal as well beforehand um, sometimes add a little bit of apple cider vinegar to it and uh, some nuts and seeds on top some fruits some berries uh, on there and then uh, for in the midday, I would have some plantains and some extra veggies, and at night, uh, rice with uh, beans. That, that would be mostly how my diet looks like. Sometimes I would have my fruits in the morning still, but I would have it more uh, starch-based and more vegetables in that mm -hmm. in that way. Uh, so but yeah, you, I was... you did this starch solution thing uh, initially. You started vegan because of the acne. Uh, at what point did it, it switched at that point, like when you're in towards health for you? What did you say? What did you say? So initially you went vegan to kind of fix the acne. And mm -hmm. then a oh, year in, you started viewing vegan as a healthy diet, so to speak. Oh, yeah. I, I thought it was from the beginning already a healthy diet. Oh, okay. Because okay. of the, the, the stories people mentioned that the first few weeks and months were amazing for them. And I thought, okay, this is probably something very healthy for us humans. It's not really heavily promoted yet, like it is now. But I thought then, yeah, this is something that is really good and healthy for me. That's but, true. It's really, it's way more popular now. Way more popular. Yeah, yeah. True, true. Promotion is everywhere. And that's a thing that I now think that if they're pushing it, it must not but be really good for us, actually. But uh, yeah, so those two years I was eating in this kind of way. I also learned about macrobiotics. I also learned how to soak certain uh, foods to ferment, um, uh, how I should avoid soy, but I could still have the fermented foods. Like I ate natto, I ate miso. And those types of foods, because I know that the nutrients, uh, for example, vitamin K2, you can find that in, in, in natto. Um, so I was really uh, paying very much attention to those things. But still, I, I just couldn't understand why I wasn't feeling good. Or No oil, I, no salt. Like True. I avoided salt like it was the devil. No salt near my food, no added salts. Um, no oils like I need to stay away already from the, the the vegetable oils but just any kind of fat as well I avoided it I was a very low fat vegan as well because I thought that was the way to go eating fat would be getting fat that was how it worked in my mind and um, yeah then came I think the third year of uh, this journey and I thought well, I'm going to just remove the grains from my diet. I did a lot of research on that, even though uh, I learned in, in the macrobiotic way of eating that grains were kind of in the middle and you need them in s some type of way. But I, I just felt from within, I need to get rid of those. And when I got rid of those is when I felt lighter and I felt more energetic again. And I thought, okay, this is a good thing. I'm, I'm on the right path again. I only um, continued on eating oatmeal because... Oatmeal never really bothered my, me. It kind of suited me always, and I really like oatmeal. Um, but I left out all of the grains. And uh, I think I continued eating in this way for a half year, seven months. And that is when I went raw. raw this is vegan. three and a half years in. 
Totally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh uh two well, let me think. First year. Three months of chicken, yeah. then about a year in starch solution, then about two. you said two years yeah, of in that. My, in my, yeah, in my in my third year is when I stopped the grains and uh went raw. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um indeed three and a half years. So that um also made me feel a lot lighter and more energetic initially um but i think because i i was definitely eating very low on calories and i started to lose even more weight but i was justifying myself like this is all right it is fine i lost my period which i i also justified it uh, for four months i lost it and i thought because of freely the banana girl that this is normal. Your body is just cleaning itself in other parts. This, your body is like, you don't even need to have a period in this kind of way. Yeah, so that's, I, that's a little, that's crazy. You know, it, if you lose your period, what's the first thing you think? Uh, like there's not enough nutrition in the environment to sustain a child. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's now also makes a lot of sense to me, which it didn't before, because I think also already being vegan for three years it definitely depleted me a lot of a lot of nutrients and minerals and i was just like literally degenerating and your mind just doesn't work well either because that's what i've noticed throughout this journey too how much more depressed i got and how low i was and not just feeling terrible in general but always trying to find something new to um yeah, feel better so like switching the diets trying to see what works and also other lifestyle things that i was trying out and um yeah i stayed raw vegan for a while and i remember then at the end of that year is when i thought like i'm done with uh yeah feeling so bad and my and my just body just not being in shape i'm gonna eat anything and I'm gonna go to the gym. So started to lift heavy weights and eat a lot of vegan junk foods as well. Like it's relative. So this is now is four years in, right? Like over four years vegan. Um, no, no, no. It's still it's Three almost yeah towards the four years. Towards the yeah. four. But so you yeah. were you were raw, and initially you felt better raw, but then you started losing more and more weight and. In hindsight, did you notice, like, over that four-year vegan period, a loss in lean body mass and just poor body composition in general? Yeah, definitely. I am lucky that I I was very um, yeah shaped and muscular in the beginning, because if I wasn't that, if I wasn't like that before, I think I would be like anorexia looking in in that time. So I had some kind of shape to me still around that time. So I didn't don't think people were. Uh, concerned in that sort of sense but um yeah I, I was just lucky I had some luggage with me and yeah then I went into uh, gymming and lifting heavy weights I literally went to the gym like six times a week and I ate a lot of trying to get those muscles I was really hoping that I could do this body transformation as a vegan like whoa i look at me accomplishing this but then after six months now i look back i thought i gained muscle but i was really i was just i got fat i think and i was 70 kilograms i've never been 70 kilograms in my life and that through eating a vegan diet and that also got me thinking like there's something wrong with this and um then i thought yeah i'm too 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 fat, I and I'm sorry for weight. you, uh, for you Americans like me out there, lacking math skills. That's 155 pounds. Uh, and what what did you weigh before? Like, what did you average around? Like before you were vegan? Always, uh, uh, always 60, 60 to 63. That was my average weight. Like I always uh, fluctuated between 60 and 63 kilograms. Mm -hmm. So, so she pretty much, much gained. Weight. She pretty much gained 25 pounds, guys. Yeah. that's a lot <laughs> and um yeah and then i thought that i i just didn't feel right in my body um didn't feel good and i thought i need to go raw again because i need to detox myself i need to cleanse my body i need to get rid of all the toxins and the fat and i can only manage that through going completely raw 
not eating cooked foods because cooked foods is a, an addiction um, and it is toxic. So I embarked on that again. I did lose a, a lot of weight initially because, yeah, I was probably also under eating. I drank a lot of uh, uh, green juices, uh, which took me so long to make a lot of salads. And I tried to eat fruit again, but my body just didn't want to have fruit anymore. Every time I had it in me, like I felt really bad and, and I had these sugar highs and um, yeah, the, the last uh, half year of my vegan journey was the worst, the most terrible I've ever experienced myself to feel in my life. And um, what I tried to do, because um, I w really wanted to stay raw, but I, I didn't manage, uh, was uh, lowering the fruit. I just thought I'm going to get rid of the fruit because I I've seen some videos of Dr. Eric, uh, some uh, doctor on, on YouTube and talking Eric how Berg. he... Yeah, he yeah. Uh, as well. Like I, I definitely watch other people that weren't vegan to find information. And through him, I learned that I should just reduce the sugar and uh, yeah, try to uh, eat more vegetables. And that's what I did. I also tried to up the protein because I thought, yeah, protein is not necessary at all. Like I will get some protein from eating my foods in general. So that doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I, I got a raw vegan protein shake. I ate a, a coconut every single day. I drank a coconut and ate the fat out of it. And it did make me feel a little bit better. But yeah, I was just really hopeless and feeling desperate. And I found myself one time in bed praying to God, which I never did, that I didn't know what to do anymore. Food wasn't appealing to me anymore. I felt terrible. Uh, depressed and I wanted to have some answers like who could help me in this time and that was when I found um, uh, Michaela's video the uh, the daughter from uh, Jordan Peterson mm -hmm. um, talking about her experience with the carnivore diet and how much trouble she had always throughout her life and she found out that eating this way really reduced her symptoms that kind of was starting to heal her and uh, I, I listened to Jordan Peterson on the Joe Rogan podcast as well. And then I saw the vegetable police also taking this route, a guy that I watched for several years during my vegan journey. And I was just thinking to myself, how can meat ever be healing? Or how can meat ever do something good to your gut? But that was my brainwashed vegan mind talking to me. But somewhere I... I thought, like, I need to get out of this paradigm. I, I need to step out of this because if I try tried everything within the vegan paradigm and I'm just, my health just keeps declining, there's something wrong with eating this way. There must be some nutrients I'm lacking because I have been taking vitamins and minerals, uh, supplements, and just nothing really seemed to help. And at what some What supplements day, were you taking? As a uh, vegan? The vitamin D, uh, D3, um, what else? Uh, zinc I took. Uh, I had uh, some selenium um, uh, drops as well. I, I had this whole cupboard full that sometimes I would take some of these, some of that. But I, I always tried to keep it in the paradigm of food. So I would Were search you taking the food that had B12? This... Yeah. Some people in might the... ask that. Let's be very clear. Like, you were taking B12, you were taking all the vitamins that, you know, people might have been concerned that you were missing, right? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Okay. Mm. So that's why I was getting really desperate with, with my health. And uh, I remember this day so good. And, and there was also one thing that I want to mention. That half year, I couldn't stop talking about eggs to people sometimes. Like, I, if I'm in Japan... And like, I'm vegan, but I'm definitely going to eat that omu raisu, like this, like egg omelette. Like I will s skip being vegan for one day just for that. And I remember back like at those, those moments that I talked about that. And then I found myself one day, I said like to my boyfriend, like you and me are going to the organic store right now. We're going to buy some eggs and some grass fed butter. And I'm going to eat that today. And 
I remember that moment so clearly because I, I really was so desperate. This must, like, I hoped it to be a, now I didn't even hope it to be a solution, but I don't know really what pushed, pushed me over the edge to just go and buy that. But I remember eating the egg, which I completely hid in my salad and, and the butter that I smeared over my sweet potato. I remember first the taste was so good. Like of the butter, I, I haven't eaten something with so much taste in so, such a long time. And it was really good. And, and when I ate the egg, I literally feel, felt my body coming back to life. I felt a tingly sensation like going up my head. And I felt so relaxed. And I felt satiated finally because that was one thing as well. I was ravenous throughout those years. Always looking for food, constantly eating, only thinking of food. and. I haven't felt so satiated in, in a long time and also bloating instantly reduced because I had this stomach uh, constantly throughout those years, gassing, burping, farting and having this extended belly from, from all yeah the fiber and whatever was going on, fermentation of the sugars. But I remember that meal was just, it changed and then I thought, ah, I'm not going to be vegan anymore. <laughs> And that's how my journey went. And that led me into uh, a carnivorous way of eating, a ketogenic way of eating, because I noticed I really had severely damaged something in my body that. So just so, just because we got a little lost in the time frame here, how long ago was this like egg meal? Uh, that was exactly uh, now two and a half months ago. So two and a half months ago. And then yeah. be before that was like your last stint on raw vegan and you yeah. were you were actually vegan for longer than four years it was like four and a half years almost uh yeah it was you would say yeah four yeah i think four is it's four like is closer okay yeah. and i remember you said that you ate a whole raw coconut every day yeah or something I you did. had to you cracked open a coconut you scooped out the flesh you did all that stuff yep. every day you know yep. I, I bought 10 coconuts and i did that the other day it's so much work it's ridiculous yeah it's crazy yeah. I it's think you would sweet. actually, without indigenous preparation methods, like uh, tools that indigenous people used to use to make these foods, it's so much more laborious and time. You need a drill, yeah. you need a hammer. You, it's very, very, and and not only that. I mean, I'm like you. Were, the problem is like, let's say you want to make coconut cream. If you buy coconuts that are shipped from Malaysia, in you know whatever country you're in, the coconut's actually too old and dry to make cream from. It's not even mm -hmm. fresh or good. Another problem with that. Uh, and just the other thing I wanted to touch on was you said cooked foods are toxic, but regardless of whether people say, whether it's raw primal people saying cooked foods are toxic or vegans saying cooked foods are toxic, if someone says a word like toxic or like a buzzword and they can't really explain themselves, I'm kind of like, well, where's the merit to that? And I always relay it back to every group of people that have ever existed as humans have consumed both raw and cooked foods. And for me, that's plenty. Um, mm -hmm. So now, two and a half months ago, you, you know, the, Michaela Peterson, the carnivore diet that fixed her digestive issues, planted the seed for you. You saw vegetable police converted to carnivore diet and that he was doing better. Uh, I guess now you could take us through kind of, you know, what improvements you saw and I guess kind of what you're looking forward to doing on the carnivore diet. And kind of, I guess uh, that would also tie into where I come in. Uh -huh. Yes, because that's how, um, yeah, it led me to find Primal Edge Health first, which I learned incredible stuff from, like how to adapt to this lifestyle and diet. And then I saw your video with, uh, with him. That was a, a, a live stream, I think it was. Yeah. And that's how I found your channel and your videos were also fascinating. I learned a bunch of them from how to eat, how to prepare and um, all your your stories about uh, fat soluble vitamins, which is super interesting. Also DHA, how important that is. Like I'm learning all these things and I'm going out of my mind. Like how could I have avoided all these foods with these valuable nutrients for such a long time? And um, I also found uh, Sverich. I don't know yeah. how to pronounce it, but yeah, hey, you, you group of people have really inspired me to get onto this lifestyle and I've learned so much and I'm feeling so great 
that because of a part of, of that and um yes yeah, since then i really avoided all plant foods i avoided all fruits all any like i was only eating animal products um i remember yeah starting out with with the raw milk and raw milk kefir the the meats um uh, organ meats because of course i saw your videos about it and also primal edge health uh videos about it how important the organ meats are so these are a part of my diet as well i recently got a uh, cod liver oil um yeah so my diet is now mainly based on on animal products and it makes me feel really good really energetic i don't crave sweet food i did have sweet like cookies and stuff like that sometimes um but i don't really feel like i want them and one big thing i've noticed that i want to mention is that i really need to stay away from caffeine and from uh, dark chocolate uh, the because yeah, like i, I could, went through some ups yeah, and like downs you could run through throughout. a wall holy shit it is not good like i <laughs> go to the bathroom straight away and uh, because I experimented with that um, a week ago, uh, I had a cup of coffee for f for four days uh, in a row. I had dark chocolate with that, 100 grams each day, and uh, I had a, a pre-workout one time. And those four days, I suddenly like, got so depressed, and my whole face full of tiny, tiny little bumps, and like. I'm learning all these things now through making the switch to mm. this diet because before when I was vegan I couldn't uh, find figure out what was bothering me what kind of foods were yeah. bothering me yes just to not. touch on those two uh, specifically uh, chocolate and coffee are very high histamine foods uh, you know they are fermented foods they are high in oxalates phytic acid just, guys just look up how coffee bean is how coffee is made how chocolates made you'll understand why they are literally probably some of the most inflammatory foods you can con consume in general you know it's it's a pretty much a rotten seed that's been roasted you know maybe some people can tolerate the the higher quality versions of it but it, it it's interesting you chose two foods specifically that might have actually caused one of the worst reactions possible but before you continue do you want to get people jealous of your food access over there like you threw out raw milk kefir like it's you know you walk down the corner store the deli and pick up some raw milk kefir yeah. yeah that is incredible i'm so glad we have that here it's it's not i don't think we had it for a very long time here yet because it actually I did some more research it's uh we cannot sell raw milk in the stores but somehow some way this this company called raw power um made it possible to sell raw milk kaffir in in the stores and yeah i was really happy with that because i could drink raw milk right away because i wasn't planning on drinking milk um that was pasteurized and just store-bought milk so i was really glad with that and um there was this other uh, we can get raw milk from farmers of course that is really easy to do you can just go to a farm and you can get raw milk and, but very close nearby, there's this little uh, marketplace, organic marketplace, that, uh, which a man just sells his, his raw milk from, from a farm, organic raw milk. So I'm re really happy to have access to that. And the raw cheeses and the raw, like, uh, there was also some types of raw yogurts and stuff. Those are so easily available, especially the raw cheeses, even in, in my... Um, the regular organ or the regular supermarkets they have raw cheeses from switzerland and also all over the netherlands so i'm really happy to have access to that and the meat quality wow <laughs> it's also really really good you guys there have like reindeer the, moose like you have literally wild yeah. animals over there like in almost in yeah. supermarkets true we even horse uh duck all kinds of uh, deer, uh, rabbit, even even in the regular stores. Uh, yeah, this is one of my big things is I always tell people support local farmers and not even support local farmers, support grass-fed, high-quality meat. The reason you guys have those foods over there is because people put their money where their mouth is and they buy those things. I mean, raw cheese is one of those things. I mean, if you went to like a ShopRite or a Tesco or an Aldi's over here, you might be able to find one raw cheese, but... 
like people want to pay a dollar a pound for chicken breast. People mm-hmm. want to pay five dollars a pound for ribeye. That's why you know you like humans in America are like grain fed cattle in America. They're confined. They're being stuffed full of shit, and that that's pretty much how they live their lives. Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But by the way, I had a question for you um, because I was during my vegan period. I was avoiding uh, fats and and oils completely in general why do you think that is like was really a bad thing for me to do because in that community they really stress on eating low fat a lot of those doctors also mentioned mm-hmm. that but uh, yeah i experienced it to be really really bad but why is that like, so people think that consuming any sort of fat in general might be negative to cholesterol uh, the negative aspect of the omega-6 fats being inflammatory. Um, f- from So from the vegan perspective, it's like any fat is super bad. It's any fat in your blood is going to cause cholesterol. It's going to cause arterial calcification. That's the vegan point of view on it. The point of view of consuming those oils from any just health standpoint in general being negative would be you know the highly inflammatory omega-6. That's why I would say it. But uh, the reason that's important is because on paper, like you did everything right from a vegan standpoint. You did every single thing you could mm-hmm. have done uh, from that perspective. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. So, so did you want to touch more on kind of just the, the benefits you've seen from like over these past two and a half months, like in body yes. and, fe- and how you feel, how you Holy look, crap. everything? Yeah. So definitely one thing is that the mental clarity and the mental, my mental health improved. Um, my general baseline of happiness is just gone up. Like I feel great in my day-to-day life. And um, with that, I have been noticing when a food is not right for me a, a lot better. I can figure out what I can eat and what not because my mind is also working better. And I can feel what's going on with my body. Next to that, in just two months' time, I regained so much muscle. Like I can, when I touch my like muscles in my leg, I can feel them finally. Before I, it just felt like really flabby skin, <laughs> and that just come back came back in in, in two, two months. Um, the quality of my skin as well. In the first week or so the cystic acne that i was having for months gone like Mm. it it was also incredible and my skin just gets better and better now i'm having still a little bit of problem because of that the 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 chocolate that i have and and the coffee but now i know to stay away from that Mm -hmm. as well um the 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 texture of my hair like my curls are more curlier they're they're really my hair is starting to get healthier yeah and fuller and thicker because it was so thin and brittle when i was vegan it was insane like my my hair was just falling out and uh the moisture in my skin and my hair uh came back i first was always taking cold showers to prevent the, the moisture uh, or to prevent my skin being too dry but now I can take hot showers and my I don't have to do anything to my skin anymore. It's just moisturized. And that's really, really great. Um, what else? Yeah, definitely body composition without even having to work out as hard as I did in the past. Just like improved a lot. But in overall, I must say the number one thing is that I'm just feeling healthy again and mentally healthy again and I'm, I feel also normal I can go to places and not worry too much about what I can eat or not because there will always be an option for me there when I was vegan I was always stressing out about those things or not uh, engaging in social activities because of that so I, I must say just being happy in general is the best thing that like what I have felt from this whole switching from from vegan to carnivore no, that's it's really it makes me happy and it's much more personalized when I speak to someone one on one when this happens, because I literally get people that will email me and say, Frank, you changed my life. I can't thank you enough. But, you know, through text, through email, it's just yeah. so like impersonal. You don't relate to the person. But you telling the story here is is such a different dynamic. And uh, I did want to say that, you know, the main thing here that you're like, Frank, why are all these vegan, these ex vegan stories? These people are switching 
to regular diets and they're not like you, this is like the drop of you know this is like from a to b flick of a switch polar opposite this is not like this is not like uh, i know vegetable police had a uh, i think he had a pretty drastic improvement but for you it's like night and day and i think a big reason for that is because of the food quality you have access to uh, i think it's very mm -hmm. important here guys that uh, the main factor that has improved her life in general is high quality nutritious animal foods we can safely say what i mean we can't we can't like specifically go into hey is it this food is it that food is it this vitamin is it that vitamin but the point is that she has been consuming incredibly high quality animal foods and uh, i just remembered you did send me blood work last time we spoke and uh there was a pretty drastic difference in uh did we we looked at the vitamin d3 right and you're yeah. and uh, i remember d3. this very well um, you, you had vitamin D3 testing. It was abysmally low. It was like single digit yeah. or something crazy. And you were taking a D3 supplement the whole time you were vegan. And then when you went carnivore and you, you stopped taking the supplement too, Yeah, I didn't. but yeah. your level shot up to almost normal. Um, yeah, like, I don't remember the specific number. Um, the 71, I think it was, but it was yeah. always, uh, underneath 20. Uh, sometimes even lower it was scarily low and i remember that the doctor gave me this uh, thick ampoules of of uh, vitamin d3 like a really high dose to just get it up and and stay on that but since going to carnivore uh, like of course incorporating the eggs and and um the liver especially and other things fish it has risen the vitamin d levels up i have in those 4 years i was always below and now in two months it suddenly went up yeah no this is this is great and we are we're coming up on i think 40 minutes now so mm -hmm. uh i think we can kind of just do a recap and then if you wanted to kind of touch on any other topics we could do a little brief uh thing maybe we missed something but i mean yeah four and a half years of vegan on and off pretty much tried everything possible and you know the main thing to take away here is she tried everything Ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing that would have worked for her on a vegan diet. And, you know, and, and we will see people's health deteriorating. And unfortunately, just the way it is now, uh, I'm almost sort of taking like a cynical point of view on it. Let people go vegan. Let them let their health. I mean, I mean, it's terrible, but it's the only way, you know, when there's too much, you know, when someone is so confident in something and wants to do it, let them do it. That's the lesson I've learned. And it, whether it's a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, They'll come back and they'll regret them. The only thing is, you know, you can mention it to them. Say, hey, you might see problems down the line that you might regret, but by all means, do what you like. Uh, we didn't really touch on, you know, you watched Earthlings. And yeah. um, and depending on people's exposure to dietary information and stuff, some people might watch that and be like, oh, this is bullshit. And some people might watch that and be like, oh, this is, this is amazing. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people watch Cowspiracy and they go vegan. It's it's completely it's unfortunate. It's literally uh, it, it, these documentaries literally take advantage of people in a way. Yeah. And and they yeah. ruin and they ruin their lives. And it's one of those things where you, you hear all about the positive things that happen. And those negative those thousands to millions, who knows how many it is, negative stories just get brushed under the rug. Uh, it it kind of goes against. Um, but uh, Crystal, did you want to talk on uh, about anything else? Or do we want to wrap this up? Um, yeah, I have nothing more to add to this. I think we discussed uh, everything, and I said everything I wanted to say. Uh, but I also wanted to mention that yeah, I I do not really regret uh, going vegan because, like you said, it's a really big learning experience. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it is unfortunate having seen like what I've done to my health these four years, how it deteriorated so much. Like if I would have gotten an other approach or uh, already did kind of a more keto based diet from that moment on I think just my overall health and appearance would have been a lot better than it is now but seeing what already two months does of eating this way it's incredible uh, so yeah I would say be really careful um, going on a vegan diet really really do your research well um yeah because it is most likely i've also heard so many stories of, of vegans that sometimes ate some meat 
sometimes ate some eggs but i really didn't dabble in that at all i never eaten a piece of meat in those times so to see what it does to someone over the over the years not consuming any animal product it's kind of terrifying so i would say don't do it but it's your own lesson you have to go through it yourself yeah it's definitely you know hindsight is always 2020 i, I prefer me butchering my analogies so forgive me but um, you know, you, you can't really, it's the same thing with anything in life. You can't really worry about oh, the past and you can always uh, move forward. But uh, I guess the last thing to touch on would be, you know, guys, let us know how you like this. And uh, we were thinking about talking about a video on like facial development in the future, uh, possibly something in related to that. Some like West Night Pride stuff, some carnivore stuff. Uh, definitely uh, let us know. Maybe if you guys want us to answer, I could do a and a or something. But uh, where can uh, they find you, Crystal? Oh, I have a, a YouTube channel called Kasumi Chris, where I make lifestyle videos. Um, I am on Instagram as well under the same name, Kasumi Chris, also on Twitter. I have been a little bit idle the last uh, weeks, but I'm coming back and I'm going to change. Don't up say the that. Content. Don't tell them that. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Kasumi Chris, that's that's where you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, and, and Twitter. Hey guys, that's Kasumi Chris. I'll put that in the description down below. K A U S K A S U M I K R I S S. Uh, and in regards to my stuff, of course, you guys are on my YouTube channel. You could check out everything in the description. Uh, just got my website up and running, frank stefanocom Definitely check that out. Uh, definitely check out my Instagram, Twitter, everything like that. Um, but outside of that, I guess we could say uh, goodbye to everyone and thanks for watching. Right? Yeah, really. Bye, guys. Go subscribe to you to to Frank's channel. He's really pumping you know, out the videos. You know lately. what's funny? What's funny really, is right. that's that's the first time anyone has ever told anyone to subscribe on my channel. Oh, so there might yay. be some, there might first be some one. giant jump in subscribers that might think about it because I literally <laughs> that's my biggest pet peeve is for people like I don't like saying that although I probably should but. I'll get other people to say it for me now. I'll have to like hold them hostage or something. We'll figure it out. <laughs> There's but, a gun uh, here. <laughs> we'll do we'll do something. We'll do something to town. We'll get the cement shoes out. We'll get some chains out. Who knows? But uh anyway, let's uh let's say bye to everyone. Bye guys. Yeah, bye. <laughs>